Welcome to The Rev and the Rav, a program of interreligious dialogue and discovery. I'm Nick Carter, president of Andover Newton Theological School. And I'm Rabbi Daniel Lehman, president of Hebrew College. We welcome you to this program. We're in the uh, Advent Christmas season, and last time we talked uh, quite a bit about those, those topics. We thought today we might just begin to look at the uh, calendar as it moves on through Christmas and into New Year. And for, for Christians, this, this time, Danny, is, is one, of course, where we try and play out the events of, of Jesus' life. And after, after uh, Christmas, uh, we, we look at uh, the escape to Egypt and uh, Jesus' circumcision. And, of course, it, it plays out a very interesting concept. Uh, it reminds Christians, I think, to a degree, how Jewish Jesus was. Right, and so how, how do you as Christians sort of relate to Jesus as a Jew? I mean, if Christmas is the birth and January 1st overlaps with Jesus' circumcision, these are part of his life as a Jew and, in fact, his... Um, becoming part of the Jewish people and the Jewish covenant. And how is it that you relate to him, both as the Messiah and as an uh, you know, incarnation of the divine, living out his life as a Jew? Well, I think it's something that uh, Christians actually would benefit from spending more attention with, uh, is looking at how Jewish Jesus was. Uh, that he was born, lived, and died as a Jew, uh, an observant Jew. I think that's important. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's one thing to see Jesus as a reformer, and it does put, it, I think, an important context into how Jesus related to the, to, um, the religious establishment of his time. And I think that some of the ways in which our faiths get pulled apart is the sense that somehow Jesus was a Christian attacking Judaism mm -hmm. or raising questions with Judaism, when in fact he was a Jew um, wrestling, you know, having a lover's quarrel in one sense with his own tradition right. um, and calling for more uh, a, a deeper sense of spirituality and authenticity in that, in that practice that that really is what the Christian story, the context of a Christian story is, and I think we lose that. I mean, I think one of the most difficult things for Jews to understand about Christianity is how this Jewish person can um, become this divine manifestation. I mean, there's almost a sense that um, we can't recognize that as being uh, possible, just given our own familiarity with our own uh, limitations and yeah. fallibility, and and it, it's almost incredulous to us that uh, the divine would actually take form within um, a Jewish body and a Jewish sure. communal structure. Well, well it's, a, it's it's a very interesting question. Given the fact that you know Jews believe that uh, uh, there will be a Messiah, the Jews believe that Jesus was not the Messiah, but the Jews believe that the Messiah will to come Jewish. will be Jewish. Yes, for sure. And again, even in terms of the Davidic dynasty, yeah, which Jesus, yeah. Uh, right. yeah. you know, in a sense uh, establishes okay. as part of the narrative. Um, yes, there is a sense clearly the the messianic figure comes about as a Jewish leader um, and a Jewish communal figure. I, I think the, what's hard for us is both the, the divine element that enters into this Jewish body, uh, which, you know, is just hard for us to, um, to fathom, uh, you know, in terms of that crossing of the human uh, mm -hmm. divine border. Um, and I think secondly, the issue becomes difficult for us because we then ask the question, okay, if, if God manifests, is manifest in this Jewish body, in this Jewish um, life, then why doesn't Christianity play out that 
decision to be manifest in Jewish form uh, in its own ritual practice, in its own um, uh, you know, Christian way? Why isn't there a stronger Jewish element? Yeah, it's a, a very interesting thing. In ter- we could both examine our traditions uh, in terms of, on the one side, why Christians aren't more Jewish, and on the other, why aren't Jews more Christian? Right. You know, uh, you know, if um, uh, if it is possible that God could be manifest in human form, uh, that God would be a Jew, um, then what's the criteria that eliminates Jesus from that from that thing? Um, uh, unless now, some of it could be a definition of Messiah. Is right. Messiah more political? Uh, or, does, or does the Messiah retain that human? Yeah, uh, uh, human which is, of course, is a critical part of, of of Christian theology about that sense in which Jesus is both divine and human. Uh, that that's part of right. the miracle of of, of the confession. Right. But I think to your point about uh, Jewish practice, I think there's a, a very interesting challenge to the Christian family about our movement away from. Uh, Jewish practice and ritual. Now, some of it retains. Right. Um, now, now redefined as Sabbath, a, a, a sab- Sabbath uh, even even our celebration of communion right. and uh, uh, those kinds of practices. That there are many of our practices that have strong roots in the Jewish tradition, but we've moved away from Jewish ritual. Right. And part of that is just a differentiation. Sure. Uh, historically, that you want to make sure that. You know this particular commitment to Jesus' messianic and, and later right. divine um, reality uh, plays out differently than right. the Jewish tradition, which sure. you know, had rejected that. Well, and I think there is a point. There is a fundamental change for Christians about the degree to which you can see Jesus as a reformer of Judaism, as something that then becomes revolutionary. In, in understanding of religious, right. religious and it points in a direction that's point that, beyond that 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 Jews were unprepared to right. go. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it did take significant form even after Jesus, but the claim for everything from Paul to Luther and Calvin to contemporary practice is that it ties back to something that's revealed right. in Jesus theologically. Right. But know. there is this movement of the last you know uh, ten twenty years of refocusing on Ju- Jesus's Jewishness. Yes. And yeah. uh, well, and I think there's there's some some uh, some merit in this for us um, that uh, you know we we, we claim uh, uh, heritage out of the he- Hebrew Bible um, and probe it for insight and mean mm-hmm. and meaning um, but we we skim over some of those practices uh, and disciplines. There are some fundamental choices, though, for us theologically. Uh, the difference between uh, justification through, by faith and justification through works, which does begin to really separate mm-hmm. Jews and Christians mm-hmm. uh, in, in what we do. But the, part of where Christians come then is after making that theological claim, which, which is fundamental to us, is so what's the place of works? Right. Uh, What's and there's the, still ritual, and there's yeah, still yeah, still ritual and and habits right. um, and symbols and those sorts right. of things uh, that uh, most of which have a root somewhere in in Judaism, but I think in some cases we've forgotten that root. So it's interesting. I think the the interest among Christians in Jesus's Jewishness for Jews is a kind of double-edged sword because on the one hand, yes, you know, we. Uh, celebrate the fact that yeah. Christians are more interested in all of this Jewish right. tradition. On the other hand, there's a fear that somehow that interest in the Jewish tradition is going to, you know, kind of take over and um, maybe obliterate our distinctiveness because you know Christians are going to become you know, adopt these Jewish practices, and how are we going to um, identify ourselves as different and, and mm-hmm. distinct and that kind of thing? And I'm wondering, for instance, is it from a Christian perspective, um, useful that January first comes on Jesus's uh, you know day of circumcision as a way of de-emphasizing the circumcision, meaning so we don't have to you know focus on this ritual that in a sense Christianity uh, moved away from, and we can 
instead celebrate the you know the first of the year you know mm -hmm. using that Gregorian calendar um, instead of you know the circumcision which you know no longer plays out in Christianity. Yeah, um, I think m many Christian ministers. I, I have to hesitate to say most. I'd right. say many Christian ministers. Uh, struggle with trying to stay focused on the theological, biblical, liturgical uh, disciplines of our faith when society um, uh, practices intervene. You know, of course, we just talked about Christmas and how Christian churches struggle with Santa Claus and reindeer and, and Frosty the Snowman. But then at New Year's, there is societal emphasis on the beginning of a new year when, in fact, our, our religious calendar is and the, the Sunday of, of New Year's is the Sunday uh, of circumcision. And is that yeah. explicit? Yes. Is that yes. celebrated it? Yeah. In those no, terms? It's, it's in liturgical text, it would be one of the texts it would be, huh, for, 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 that, for that Sunday. Huh. Now, the temptation, of course, is that the tidal wave of society's interest in New Year's right. often leads to pastoral reflections on, uh, uh, you know, resolutions beginnings. and beginnings and all of that, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but you would see it relatively common that, um, you know, between, uh, uh, you know, you've, you've just, uh, you know, you've got Epiphany coming. You know, um, and uh, uh, on the following uh, week, um, and trying to trying to sort that through, I think is 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 important. And I think there's a reasonable number of clergy who do try and explore it. Now, uh, what they do with it right. is all over the board. Right. But it's interesting because in the Jewish tradition, the actual day of birth yeah. has no ritual attached to it, and no None. real religious significance obviously it's right. you know it's a wonderful blessing but it's the circumcision and nowadays um, in uh, egalitarian uh, forms of Judaism there's naming ceremonies both for right. baby boys and baby girls um, but the circumcision and that that whole process of welcoming the baby into the covenant which happens you know eight days after the yeah. birth um, that becomes the ritual moment not the birth right. well it's, it's important, I think, for Christians to go back and look, for instance, in Luke, at both John the Baptist's birth and circumcision, mm -hmm. and Jesus' birth and circumcision, and their naming. Right, that's interesting. Um, that but in some ways, the baptism in Christianity takes the place in a certain kind of way of circumcision, because it's really entering into this... The faith. Faith, into this community. Or, yes, it becomes a, a significant thing. Baptism is fundamental absolutely fundamental you know if you want to come to terms with christians you got to deal with you got to deal with baptism right and um, the and the infant baptism probably takes its cue more from the circumcision yes yes and it's the adult a, baptism is yeah. trying to make it more about yeah you know, and that's that's that's, that's where for instance you would see a difference between uh the congregational tradition and the baptist tradition because the you know the united church of christ you would see uh, infants baptized, really whereas in uh, the Baptist tradition, it's, adult. it's a strong believer in, in uh, adult believer's baptism, right. where you reach the age of, of decision and you make a conscious personal choice to right. be baptized. Right. Uh, now, what happens is, is that those traditions that baptize infants always follow it up with confirmation. Right, so there is an adult the, an adult th th choice right. there that's implied an expression right. an expression um, but you know for for Baptists there is this sense of what you do is you dedicate a child and it has to do with both the parents and the community saying we're going to raise this child in a Christian family so that it will feel natural and right when they reach the age of decision to make that choice right. um, Whereas, you know, so there's a, a, a significant shift, but it does take the place of uh, and begin to overshadow that sense of circumcision. Um, and circumcision is, is much less discussed. Right, that's interesting. Um, and that it, um, uh, you know, when I think of, of work as a pastor, uh, it was a topic that 
barely 10% of my congregation would bring up. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so. Well, it's fascinating to think about New Year's uh, in terms of the circumcision and uh, the differences uh, between the Jewish community and the Christian community uh, around that ritual, but the, in many ways, the way baptism has, yeah. has come in um, as a way to continue that sense of entering into the, uh, into the covenant and into the faith. Um, so that wraps it up for uh, this week's um, program of the Rev and the Rav. My name is Rabbi Danny Lehman from Hebrew College. Shalom. And I'm Nick Carter from Andover Newton Theological School. Peace. Oh,